Today, I will give you a formula to improve your biological age. But first, I'm going to break it down to letters and words. And I'm going to start with a letter T, as in think about healthy aging. Now, I know that aging is not something that we think about regularly, especially when we're young. But imagine if you would never, ever think about the state of the tires on your car, and you would just go ahead and speed on a highway every single day, year after year after year. Well, unfortunately, that's what many of us are doing with our lives. And I was no different. I only started thinking about it when I occurred my first real health issue. But that happened much sooner than I expected. Already in my late 20s, early 30s, I was faced with a miscarriage, which proceeded into a diagnosis of infertility. And I'm not the only one. According to the latest WHO report, one in every six adults struggles with infertility. And there are other health issues which are typical, typically age-related, but are occurring among younger and younger individuals. For instance, let's take diabetes. There is an increased incidence of diabetes type 2 among younger individuals. Or cancer. Cancer is something typically found in people over 60. And yet, a very recent report showed that it is its incidence, especially incidence of some cancers, such as breast cancer and cancers of the digestional system, is increasing. And that increase was driven by population in their 30s. So is there actually something that we can do about it? The answer is yes. But for that, we need a next piece of that formula, and that is the letter E, as in educate yourself and talk to other educated professionals. Now, in order to really understand what is going on as we're aging, we need to understand the molecular processes that are going on in our body. And fortunately, scientists, many, many of them, have devoted years of their life to answer these questions. And they found a fingerprint of aging, so-called hallmarks of aging. There are many, many different hallmarks of aging, some of them more tied to your genetic background, some of them more tied to the interaction between environment and your biology. But I'm not going to tell you about all of them. Instead, today I'm going to focus on just one, and that is inflammation. Now, inflammation is a good thing. Inflammation is there to protect you from harm, from damage, something like ordinary cut, or maybe a virus or bacteria, or even cancer. But it's only good when it lasts for a short while. It shouldn't move on into something that we call a chronic inflammation. That's when there is a long-term inflammation, because we can see that chronic inflammation is actually in the background of many, many, many different chronic and age-related diseases. Fortunately, there is a lot of research showing that we can actually do something about inflammation. There are already published and known ways how to decrease inflammation. Some of them include weight loss in obese individuals, or an adequate exercise regime, or perhaps optimizing a diet towards microbiome. For instance, a very recent, very good cell paper showed that an increased amount of fermented foods in, in the diet was able to decrease inflammation in all of the tested individuals. And there are also other things which increase inflammation. For instance, ultra-processed foods. Too many ultra-processed foods in a diet. So fortunately, there are already ways how we can deal with inflammation. But in order to 
move further from there, we need the next piece of this formula. And that is D, letter D, as in decide to make change. And this is where most of us are failing, at one point or another. And I know it is not easy because I did it myself. When I started changing my lifestyle, it almost felt like a punishment in the beginning. Because as I started cooking these healthier foods, it required a lot of time, and yet it was very tasteless. In fact, so much so that my husband's best friend was a bottle of hot sauce for a while. And unfortunately, that's not a joke. But as the time progressed, I was getting better at it. And that's because lifestyle change is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It takes a while to get trained into it. It takes a while to rewire your brain. But eventually, I was able to really get hang of it and start cooking much better, much healthier foods, which taste well, thankfully. But without this piece of the formula, which is measure, all of this effort would mean nothing. Why? Well, you need to be able to measure the effect of the changes that you've made. And there are many, many ways how we can measure it, but I'm going to talk about one today, and that is measuring your biological age. Now, what is biological age? If we simplify something as complex as human being into something a little bit less complex, let's say a car, then a date of the birth would correspond to a date of production of the car. And the time that has passed since would be chronological age. But biological age is much more complex term and it has to do with the damage that was done to the body during this time. And that would be something like mileage in cars. Now we know, even if we have two cars, which are made on exactly the same date, in exactly the same factory, but they have different mileage, they're not going to be the same cars. And the same is true also for identical twins in humans. They can also have different biological age. Now, when I measured my biological age for the first time, I realized my biological age was 46, even though I was in my early 30s at the time. And that was worrisome. It meant that I had a lot of inflammation going on in my body. And I had to deal with it somehow. But how did I measure this inflammation? We need to first answer this. And I did it using something called glycan clock of age. Now, glycan clock of age is actually a description which tells you about small molecules, small sugars, attached to the immunoglobulin G, which is the most prevalent antibody in your blood. Now, this IgG is a Y-shaped molecule. So, it is a soldier defending you from all kinds of damage that can appear in your bodies. And then glycans would be attached somewhere around my hips, and they would be changing the structure and therefore also the function of this immunoglobulin G. Now you can have so-called pro-inflammatory glycans, which are glycans which stimulate more inflammation, or you can have the anti-inflammatory glycans, which decrease the amount of inflammation. With the anti-inflammatory glycans, your IgG would be just rolling around, saying, hi there, immune cell, everything is fine, no problem there. But with the pro-inflammatory, it would just grab that cell and put it to work to destroy something that is dangerous. Now, as I said, we need both. We need inflammation when it's important, when it protects us from something. But when this inflammation becomes chronic, then it's a problem. And we know that as people are getting older, as they are aging, the amount of pro-inflammatory glycans goes up 
and up and up. And we can also see that in people who are younger but get some age-related diseases sooner, they have the higher amount of pro-inflammatory glycans than the persons of the same chronological age. So, the last piece of this formula is repeat. When I was doing my PhD in Austria, there was this big sign on the hallway. And it said, if you fail once, do it two more times to make it statistically significant. So, in essence, all scientists are good at failing. But that's not by accident. That is because failing is an essential step towards learning what is important and learning what makes you succeed. So, I repeated also the testing of my biological age. And at the beginning, with all of the effort and all of the lifestyle changes that I was doing, I was failing at them. In fact, my biological age was becoming even higher. But you see, even though there is so much advice out there, not every advice is good for each and every individual. So what I did is that I had a very, very busy lifestyle, and I started snacking on a lot of fruits, which are healthy. But they're also rich in sugar. And my grandfather got a diabetes type 2 when he was in his early 40s. And I carried the same genetic burden in my genes. So I could see that as my biological age was going up, so was my blood sugar. And in my mid-30s, I was rushing towards diabetes type 2. But once I realized this, I was able to turn the tide to push it away from getting diabetes in my early 40s, and I was able to reduce my biological age by simple lifestyle changes. And even though I did not manage to bring it below my chronological age, this is still an ongoing journey. And the difference between my biological and my chronological age is lower now than it was at the beginning of it. So I'm not giving up. And there are many, many other people who have tried to change their biological age, and they've had even more success. And the answer was not the same for each and every one of them. So maybe some of you could even eat croissant every morning and not have any issues with it. Maybe someone else from the audience cannot tolerate salty food, or maybe they have problem with digesting fats. The point is, you really don't know until you measure this. Now the last question, the final question is, how much can we actually change our biological age? And we tested that. We looked into it in a large population, and we created some models, and these models told us that we can change 20% of our biological age through simple lifestyle changes. Now, I know 20% might not sound so much to some of you, but imagine it this way. If your maximal lifespan is 100 years, then simply by changing your lifestyle and your habits, you could gain 20 years of healthy life. And that's a lot no matter which way you look at it. So now, the only thing left is to summarize everything that I've told you so far and to give you the formula that I promised at the beginning. And this formula is that, measure, repeat. Now, what you do with this formula from now on is entirely up to you. But if the only thing that you get from this is that you should watch this TEDx lecture on repeat and measure how many times you watched it, I won't complain. Thank you.